This is Olga Kirschenbaum with Nine Minutes of Creative Wisdom Podcast, where creatives share their wisdom. It is six questions in nine minutes because creatives have a short attention span. So let's get to it. In a few sentences, tell me who you are and what you do. Hi, Olga. First of all, it's an honor to be with you. And uh, I got to speak quick, man. We got nine minutes. Here we go. Here we go. Um, My name is David Trotter, and I am the founder of Rise Up Creatives. It's an online membership platform to help entrepreneurs, particularly female entrepreneurs, stand out and save time on social media by providing a lot of done-for-you and done-with-you resources that they can utilize on their feeds and stories and so forth. I'm also the host of the Inspiration Rising podcast, where we feature female entrepreneurs and leaders who tell their stories and share their wisdom and we've had almost 200 episodes and I just, it's an honor to, to speak to so many amazing women. So what is your favorite part about being a creative leader? Probably that I get to do whatever I want to do. I mean, it's, I got to pay the bill somehow at some, you know, at some point in time, my wife's going to be like, uh, where's the money coming in? But I really don't have the restraints of eight to five. I don't have the restraints of a boss or an owner telling me what to do, that if I get a creative idea, something that I want to try, something I want to explore, it's up to me to be able to leverage my time, my resources, my finances to be able to do that. And I just love that. Some people probably would be overwhelmed by that, but I'm more of a self-starter, go-getter, like I live my life by a to-do list. And so if I have an idea, I'm going to do it. So I speak to a lot of creatives who will avoid the money side of their businesses. They'll pretty much do anything to avoid it. What are your thoughts on that? Well, hmm, money, um, money can be a very challenging subject. Um, I, for whatever reason, um, I, I actually, I'll tell you a crazy story here, Olga. I grew up in a Christian tradition where um, it believed that there were people that were, could kind of almost speak on behalf of God. Like, so just take that into the woo woo context. And it's kind of like Oracle speaker, psychic, you know, that kind of thing. And um, I remember having a guy when I was 18, speak over my life, they recorded it on cassette tapes, Olga, I don't know if you know what those are, but they are these square rectangle things, I still have it in my storage. And one of the things that he just said over my life is that I would never have to worry about money. And I, and that that could just seem, well, like, oh, he could have said that about anybody, but it's true. I I have, I've always had enough. I've always had enough. Have I worried about money? Yes, I have. I worry about it because we live in a world where you need money to do the things that you want to do. And especially I've got a family, my kids are 21 and 18 and my wife of 27 years, you know, the older you get and the more responsibilities you have, the more you get concerned about money. So um, I would say that as I work with entrepreneurs, I want them to treat their business like a business and not a hobby. And that means being aware of what they're spending, what they're taking in, and how they think about money. You know, as I get older, the more and more that I have a positive expectation of money, um, the more I earn you know, and, and uh, it does seem magical in a lot of ways, but um, yeah, it can definitely be a a tough subject. I can, I can, you know, I have to work on not worrying about it. Um, I, my wife and I have conversations all the time about that. Like, Hey, let's not worry about, we've always had enough. We've always had more than enough. I don't know if that's because I work hard. I don't know if it's white privilege. I don't know if it's because of the family I've been born into. Right. I don't know, but I just know that I seem to be taken care of. I have a positive attitude about it. I work hard. Um, But I will say, when it comes to working with my bookkeeper and tax preparation person, it's probably one of the most things that I hate in life. I just hate it. I just hate it. I hate everything about it. And she always laughs because I'm like, oh my gosh, I would rather go to the dentist than talk to you. (laughs) I hear that. Listen, I was an accountant for 10 years. I really just like doing my own books. I really dislike it. Every time there's an aversion to it, tax time, don't love it. Um, But there is something to say about mindset, even when it comes to money. Uh, This idea of starting to think I will always have enough. I believe that mindset is 80% of everything that we do. 
only 20% is habit. Yes, you do need to work hard. You need to do things to make things happen, but changing that mindset. So anyone listening, if you want to pick up a mantra, that could be a good one to start with. I will always have enough money. Who are the creatives that you admire or have inspired you on your journey? Well, uh, how do we limit Olga creatives? Who does this mean? Do they paint? Do they? No, they, they can do everything, right? Anybody's a creative? Absolutely. We all, we all have to be creative in some way. Um, you know, I would say uh, Tim Ferriss um, has uh, really opened my eyes right after college. I read his book, The 4-Hour Workweek, which has become since a bit dated. But um, I've read that book multiple times, and that opened my eyes up to entrepreneurial adventures because I grew up in a family where my dad worked for the government kind of eight to five and my mom worked for a mortgage company eight to five and we just had steady income this is what came you know comes in but the thought of living anywhere going anywhere starting anything and doing anything that really opened my eyes up to a whole new way of life um I'd also say you know in the online space Four women that really have influenced me, um, Rachel Hollis, Amy Porterfield, Marie Forleo, and um, Jenna Kutcher. These are all women who are really big in the kind of podcasting and online space. And I'm just, I just admire their authenticity. They're always learning. Um, their, uh, their hustle, not hustle in terms of overworking. I'm not talking Gary Vaynerchuk, kill yourself hustle. I'm talking about you do, you got to work hard, you know, for most of us, at least when you're starting, you got to work hard to create your business. So I've, I've definitely been influenced by those four women. Love that. What is the one piece of wisdom or advice that other creatives should know? Hmm. This is the thing that I feel like I've only figured out in the last two years. I'm 48. So I'm a slow learner, Olga. <laughs> I had always heard people say that if you can learn how to enjoy the middle of anything, you've kind of found your thing, right? And I, I was a pastor for 10 years. I owned a marketing business for 12 and did you know four feature films. And during all of that time period, I love the beginning. I love the vision. I love the brainstorming. I love the strategy. And I love crossing the finish line. But all that part in the middle can feel like just hell sometimes, just so hard. And I feel like in the last two years, since I've started Inspiration Rising, the podcast, and I'm coaching entrepreneurs and helping people with social media, I feel like I've found my thing. Like I found the middle where I just, I can enjoy it. And not that there aren't hard times, but I am enjoying the process. And I don't know if that's because I finally found my niche or because I finally matured, or I've gotten more emotional, you know, intelligence, or I'm just old, I don't know. But I would say, how do you, I try to figure out how you can enjoy the middle too. Powerful. Now, the most important question of the podcast, Kakaya Vasha Libima Musica, or in English, what's your favorite music? You know, Olga, I'm assuming that you asked this, because you like music a lot. I do. Tell me what do you, I want to know beforehand. What is your favorite music? House music, hands down. Oh, house music. Okay. All right. I am not a big music lover. I literally, I could probably go the rest of my life without hearing a single note of music. It just would not probably bother me. I know, I know, I know that's probably I'm you know, sac sacrilegious to say on your podcast, but I mean, so I would probably enjoy more just meditation music, you know, just kind of the chill in the background. Um, maybe some lo-fi, like lo-fi beats um, where it's, you know, kind of a little lo-fi slash meditation. Yeah, meditation music that. is still music. Yes, of course. Well, thank you, David, for being on. What is the best way for the listeners to connect with you? Uh, they can listen to Inspiration Rising podcast. It's on all the different podcast apps. They could um, find me at uh, riseupcreatives.com. That's a great place, riseupcreatives.com. Awesome. And I'll include that in the show notes. This is Olga Kirschenbaum with Nine Minutes of Creative Wisdom Podcast, where creatives share their wisdom.
make sure you check out my blog at rags to riches consulting.com to get money insights you haven't heard before.